And thank you very much for your patience, uh, all of you that uh, are here. I will only take a few minutes, so I'll skip a lot of slides, and I'll go directly to the message. So this is a work uh, performed with uh, my postdoc now, uh, Mikhail Gauding, who was a former uh, PhD student of uh, Norbert Peters. And it is about internal intermittency and finite Reynolds number effect for uh, the passive scalar mixing. So I'll skip all the importance of turbulence for mixing, the presence of uh, a large number of, uh, of uh, scales. But we are definitely <coughs> interested in uh, performing here numerical simulations in a forced homogeneous isotropic turbulence in which the scalar will be injected through a large scale um, uh, uh, scalar gradient. And uh, in that, we look at the statistical description of turbulent flows and turbulent scalar mixing uh, and turbulent scalar mixing by uh, structure functions. So I will skip all details about the code. The code is incompressible. It solves the incompressible Navier-Stokes equations by a pseudo-spectral method. The scalar is transported by this transport equation in which we'll consider that the Schmidt number is equal to unity and we have an imposed mean gradient in uh, one direction, let's, let's say y. So gamma is the mean value of the scalar gradient. This is the range of the Reynolds number we solve for uh, typically six situations of uh, Reynolds number, so ranging R lambda based on the Taylor microscale, ranging between 88 up to 754, and these are all details on, of the simulations. These are images of the scalar, so in which we see that the large scale coherent motions we may have here with a strong gradients at the edges. And this is an image of a scalar dissipation in which we see a strong intermittency, so alternance between regions in which things are smoother and regions in which the dissipation is uh, much more important. Uh, the signals show up such a zones in which turbulence relaxes and, the, and another zones in which we have a stronger activity. Of course, this is uh, better illustrated when we look at the scalar gradient here represented. So this is known as the phenomenon of internal intermittency. So to describe that, we usually work with structure functions that can be for the velocity field, any order structure functions for the velocity field, so increments between two points of the space separated of a scale R, and of course we have transport equations for these uh, 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 increments and the moments, and we'll be particularly interested in increments for the scalar, for which uh, we have, in the under conditions of asymptotic results, we have transport equations uh, which relate a second order moment to the mixed third order moment, and uh, of course the mean value of uh, chi, which is the dissipation of uh, the scalar variance. Um, now, when we look at the even order structure functions, and here we look at the n equal to 2, 4, and 6, so second order, fourth order, and sixth order, so this look like that as a function of the normalized uh, scale. At small scales, they are analytical, so they, for the second order moment, we uh, perform a Taylor series expansion, so the second order will be proportional to R square, fourth order R4, etc. In the inertia range, so for scale larger, if that is allowed, uh, to exist by the Reynolds number, so we have what we call anomalous exponents. These are the values we obtained for this case, which is an R lambda of uh, 500 and something. Now, because we lose all that in the transport equation obtained for the, from the first principles, one of the questions that I started to address uh, two days ago is that of self-similarity or the way we can normalize all the quantities that are involved in the transport equation and in the structure functions themselves. So which is the good normalization of uh, all these things? And usually, as I have shown on, in my talk on uh, Monday, the Kolmogorov and kolmogorov obukov coursing, because we speak about the scalar, are the right quantities to normalize the second order structure functions. Because remember, I started from the transport equation for the second order moment, and we have shown for the velocity field that the mean value of epsilon, so the kinetic energy dissipation rate and the viscosity were the good parameters to build the Kolmogorov scale that were adequate. Now for the scalar, for the second order moment, they perfectly normalize. These are the compensated sec second order structure functions for the scalar. Then they perfectly, uh, they are perfectly normalized with respect to kolmogorov obukov corsin uh, variables, so all these variables. But if we normalize the fourth order structure functions here, that we see that are staggered <coughs> arrangement, 
Here, this is the result for the velocity field and here for the scalar. So both the velocity and the scalar, the higher order uh, moments do not normalize with respect to the classical Kolmogorov or Bukov coursing variable. So we need to understand that and to look for adequate similarity scales for fourth order, sixth order, et cetera, in order to explain intermittency and go back to transport equations and adequately normalize that in order to be able to solve that and obtain eventually what happens for the scaling range in the inertial range, for instance. It is not the only question, uh, of course. So how do we do that? And there is that in the dissipative range. As I have mentioned there analytically, so we develop in a Taylor series for nth order. And we uh, write that like that as the nth order moment of the scalar gradient will be written as n divided by two moment of the scalar dissipation. So this n divided by two moments of chi will come into play. And I'll skip other details. The, we show that when we normalize by the classical komorgov obikov corsin uh, variables, then what it comes into play is, is this yellow uh, rectangle here, which uh, involves n divided by two power of chi and mean value of that and renormalize by the mean value of chi to the power n uh, divided by two. Of course, this is dimensionless, but the ratio, as we see, will evolve as a function of uh, the Reynolds number. Of course, for n equal to two, this is equal to one, so it simplifies, and we go back at the second order moment to the classical result of Kolmogorov or Bukov Corsin, but at higher order moment, we'll still have, for instance, for four, chi square divided by the mean value of chi to uh, the power of two. And we show with our uh, numerical simulations that, of course, at left you have normalization with respect to the classical KOC, Kolmogorov or Bukov coursing, so we do not have normalization, the curves do not collapse, whereas when we use our modified scaling, in which we use the, here the square power of chi instead of the square of uh, the mean value of chi, of course, we have a much better arrangement, a much better uh, uh, superposition and collapse of the course, uh, cur curves. The same results holds for high order moments. And I will finish by going back to the transport equations that can be obtained here we are for the scalar. So from the advection diffusion equation, this is a divergence term, so the transport through the velocity field, this is a production term. And at the right hand side, when we, we re write the transport equation for higher order moments of so 2n, we'll obtain a term in which we ob obtain the classical diffusive transport. This, this was present, of course, at the level of second order moment as well. But this is a dissipative source term in which we have the direct connection correlation between the two point dissipation and delta phi to the power two n minus two. So the next order lower of uh, the uh, scalar increments. Of course, if uh, n equal to one, then here, this is zero, and we go back to the classical result in which that will only depend on the mean value of chi. But if it is not the case, then we have delta phi square, for instance, for uh, n equal here to two, so fourth order moments, uh, multiplied by chi. This is, will be a function of r, so it will not be a constant. And we, of course, we, we close our budget for the uh, fourth order moments over the whole range of scale with a nonlinear curve here, so the transfer of the energy for the fourth order moment, which will correspond actually to a transfer of the variance of the variance or energy of the energy, and will be non-uniform through the scales. However, we close our budget, and this is the last uh, slide. This dissipation uh, source term also collapses when we normalize with our modified uh, scaling, uh, uh, scaling. Um, uh, function that we have proposed. These are our conclusion. We propose the modified KOC scaling in which the higher order moments of chi will come into play. The result is backed up by the self-similarity analysis that I do not develop here because of the limited time, but it is exactly the calculations I have developed uh, this Monday for, it was for the variable viscosity that can be applied for the passive scalar here and it just have been, uh, have, has to be developed. And uh, the question is now, are the two of them, the modified and the classical QOC scaling, are equivalent for infinitely large Reynolds numbers? Then it is uh, for now uh, an open question uh, that uh, probably uh, uh, further numerical simulation will uh, help us to solve that. As far as we have for now, these normalized uh, functions here still increase with the Reynolds number almost at uh, air lambda of uh, 750 that we have. So we, if somewhere there will be a plateau, 
that for now we do not uh, know. Thank you very much. So the message is once again that things are not clear when you look at higher order moments that are really relevant for internal intermittency and understanding how smooth regions in the mixing do uh, uh, cohabitate or live together with other regions in which uh, mixing is uh, much more important. It is another way in uh, looking at how mixing is done and how, mixing, how good is the mixing. So a second order moment is only the energy average over scale. It is a first order approach. Thank you very much.